Hello and welcome to Let's Play Vault of the Vampire by Keith Martin. Um, can you put an end to Count Hydrich's evil reign of terror? Um, you are a hardy adventurer and have journeyed to the icy mountains of Moristatia in search of great wealth and fortune. Um, but what do you find there makes your blood run cold. Um, you discover by chance uh, the terrible secrets of the local villagers. Can you free them from the evil tyranny of the bloodthirsty Count, um, or will you too succumb to a horrifying fate? Two dice, a pencil and an eraser are all you need. You decide which path to take, which dangers to risk, and which foes to fight. And there's a picture of uh, Steve Jackson on the left there, and Ian Livingstone on the right, uh, uh, the creator of the, or rather the creators of the fighting fantasy series. Um, he, on the right, actually, is now a multi-millionaire because I think he founded Games Workshop, uh, which is Warhammer. Um, I've never actually been into Warhammer, but it's, uh, it's so popular uh, that it has branches all over the country. Um, um, I'm not entirely sure why. It doesn't seem that interesting, in my opinion, but uh, I've never been into that uh, role-playing stuff myself. Anyway, uh, there's, a, uh, there's the front cover. Uh, there's the vampire looking very haunting. Um, this PDF I have is a little bit blurry. I might have to zoom in a bit more. <clears throat> There's a nice picture there of the castle and the, the surrounding areas. Can't read that writing. It's too sort of gothic, whatever the, uh, the font is. Anyway, um, Vault of the Vampire. You have travelled to the distant mountains of Moristasia in search of legendary wealth and fortune. Um, halting overnight at the lonely coaching inn, you wonder at the unfriendliness of the locals. Then an old woman breaks the silence and you learn of their terrible secret. Now they live in constant fear for their lives and their souls. The whole village lives under the tyranny of the evil Count Heydrich. Or Heydrich. I don't really know, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Um, I'm, I'm going to say Heydrich, although it probably is Heydrich. I don't know. Anyway, um... People vanish, never to be seen again, but everyone knows they have been taken to the castle where they die a terrible death at the hands of the bloodthirsty Count and his evil minions. It's always a Count, isn't it? Never a Duke, uh, or a Marquis, or a, or a Baron, or a Viscount. Um, interestingly, um, you don't get Counts in England. Uh, you actually get Earls, that's the equivalent. Um, although, even more interestingly, uh, the, uh, the female equivalent of an earl is actually a countess, um, which sort of proves that uh, that an earl is the equivalent of, of a count. So uh, that's quite interesting. Um, I've always found it interesting anyway, because I think Prince Edward is the Earl of Wessex and his wife is uh, the Countess of Wessex. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, the old woman's granddaughter has just been taken and you must answer her pleas for help. Which old woman? Uh, you know it is a dangerous and awesome task, but you have to destroy the evil that haunts this place or meet a terrible end. Which old woman? It doesn't say. It just says the old woman, um, implying I've already met her. Um, two dice, a pencil and an eraser are all you need to embark on this thrilling adventure, which is complete with its elaborate combat system and a score sheet to record your gains and losses. Many dangers lie ahead, and your success is by no means certain. It's up to you to decide which route to follow, which dangers to risk, and which adversaries to fight. Um, I think that's how you pronounce that word. Uh, some people might say adversary, uh, uh, but I've always said adversary, so that's what I'm going to say. Um, okay, there's another title screen there. Uh, by Keith Martin, illustrated by Martin McKenna. I think the front cover was illustrated by Ian Ed... Uh, no, does that say Ian or Les? Um, inconclusive. I'm going to say Les. Uh, Les Edwards. Uh, it could be Ian. I don't know why I thought it was Ian. That's clearly an L. But yeah. Anyway. Um, right. Okay. Let's zoom out a bit. Uh, I'm sort of blurry. This uh, this PDF I have. All right. So yeah. There's there's all the list of the the books up to this episode. Um, as I said, or did I say? No, I didn't say this year. Uh, Portal of Evil is uh, number 37. Um, I always remember that, uh, that Vault of the Vampire is number 38 because it comes after Portal of Evil, which is 37. and That's one of my favourites, so I always remember the number of that. 
Uh, yeah, there's number one, Warlock of Firetop Mountain, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, you, you can always tell the books that uh, aren't based on um, fighting um, monsters and uh, fantasy and stuff. You know, the space ones. Uh, they're not very good in my opinion. Um, I've said that before. The only um, sort of modern set one that's uh, that's really good is House of Hell. But that's sort of modern. That's not sort of space. Uh, Starship Traveler, um, Space Assassin, Freeway Fighter. That's sort of post-apocalyptic. You're in this sort of car driving around. Um, Rings of Kether. That might be a space one, I think. That rings a bell. Appointment with Fear. That's another one, another sort of futuristic one I think. Rebel Planets, yeah. Um Robot Commander. Sort of the Samurai. That's yeah, set in uh, feudal Japan, so it's not really a I suppose it it is set in the same universe. I suppose you could argue that uh, uh Japan is in this universe, but it's sort of medieval fantasy really, I don't know. Uh, Star Strider, Phantoms of Fear, not entirely sure what that is. Midnight Rogue, sounds like sort of uh, uh, the Cadbury's Milk Tray Man. Um, if you're American, you won't get that joke. Cause it, was, it was an old advert on TV, but he, he always seemed like a midnight rogue. Um, Battle Blade Warrior. Anyway, enough of this. Um, right. Oh, yeah, Steve Jackson's Sorcery. The only one I've ever played of that is The Crown of Kings, and it has 600 pages, and it was extremely difficult, and I gave up on it. Uh, I've never tried the others, but they're all extremely difficult. And those ones sort of follow on. Uh, the plot of those books, sort of, uh, uh, they all follow on from each other. But yeah, they're really hard, really hard books there. Okay, let's... Um Okay, let's do this nonsense. Okay, introduction. Before embarking on this adventure, you must first determine your strengths and weaknesses. You use dice to determine your initial skills, stamina, luck, and faith scores. That's a new one. Um, blah, 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 adventure sheet. Yeah, we don't need that because we have the old trusty... Um, text document. Um, I've cleared off the the book I was doing last. What was it? The uh, What was the book I was doing last? It was... Uh, uh, it was that one... Uh, Death Trap Dungeon, how can I forget? Yeah, Death Trap Dungeon. Yeah, so, oh, I didn't delete that one. Yeah, so Ninja, I, I didn't delete that one, so let's get rid of that. There we go. Okay, um, bit of a goof there. Okay, yeah, so have all the skill, stamina, and luck points ready. I, I, um, I'll have to put Faith down as well, because that's a new one, so that's right, Faith. There we go. Because you've got to have Faith, in, in the words of uh, George Michael, or Wham, or whatever, whichever thing did that. That, that song. Uh, George Michael was in Wham, but I think that was George Michael's solo. Anyway, right, so let's do this nonsense. Anyway, so right, we have to do the skill, stamina, luck, and faith scores. You advise either to blah, 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 photocopies. Yeah, it's not going to happen, is it? Okay, still stamina, luck, and faith. Roll one die. Add six to the number and enter this total in the skill box on the adventure sheet. Interestingly, on um, Return to Firetop Mountain, which was just written by Ian Livingstone, um, he doesn't call them. Um, he doesn't use the term die as in one and dice as in more than one. He actually says dice and dice. Uh, uses dice for singular, which is, I suppose, colloquially uh, could be construed as correct, but really it is one die and two dice. Anyway. Uh, so I like how it's done here. Anyway, roll one, die, add six uh, to the number. Right, let's hope we get lucky. Um, apparently, according to um, my sources, uh, we need a, uh, a... It's it's needed to have a skill score of 11 or more, but I will put up with 10. So if it's anything less than 10, I'm going to have to do this again, because this is because otherwise it'll be too difficult, because this book is hard. It is a hard book. All right, go on then. Oh, we just need one die, don't we? Number of dices. I don't like that. Yes, go down. There we go. The old dice program. All right, so here we go. We need uh, uh, um, four or more. And we get one. See, I'm not having that. Let's do it again. Yep. No, I want more. More, more, more. There we go, five. That's better. But yeah, it's... Uh, it is advisable to have 10 or more, ideally more than 10. I'd say 11, really. So let's let's just say we got 11, because I'm not making this difficult for myself, really. Okay, um, all right, what are we doing? Yeah, so we got 11 skill. So that's my initial one. That's, no, I need a, a comma, don't we? There we go, jolly good. 
Okay, what now, Mr. Wolf? Roll two dice. Add 12 to the number rolled and enter this total in the stamina box. So the score will be between 14 and 24. Inclusive. Yes, it will. Okay, so... Okay, so now we need two dice. And, yeah, we need pretty high stamina. I'd say about 18 or 17 or more or something. So we need this to be... The two dice to be um, five or more, I'd say. Um... Nine, that's a, that's a good score. So we've got 21. I don't have to keep doing it. Okay, 21. Um, I won't, I'll try not to do it with the battles. If, if I do lose a battle, um, then I'll do it. Um, you know, then I'll restart the battle if I lose a battle. Um, I won't keep cheating on the battles to make sure I win every time. If I lose a battle, I'll just do it again and the, uh, from the start. And then I'll edit it out. So I'll, at least, uh, you know, because there's, there's no other way to do this really. Unless I keep doing the book over and over again. So... Uh, and considering the the battles are just based on luck, or at least the algorithms involved in this awful dice program I use, um, yeah, that's how I'll do it. But I won't keep doing it, you know, like, oh, no, I've been hit, and I'll do it again until I'm not hit. I'll just, if I lose a battle, I'll just edit, I'll do the battle again and just edit it out. That's all I'll do. Anyway, so let's put that in. We've got 21 for the stamina score. Let's do that. Lovely jubbly. Right, okay, it's making a buzzing noise again. Um, good old... Uh, dice program. I've missed you so much. Right, roll one die, add six to this, and that's the luck. Right out. okay. Roll one die. Oh, excellent. Uh, got six first time. Get rid of the buzzing. Lovely, yep, work. There we are. Um, yeah, so we've got 12 luck. That's absolutely fantastic. So 12 luck. Let's put that in. Lovely jubbly. Okay, now let's do the, the faith, the new one. Roll one die, add three to this number, and enter the Total in the faith box on the adventure sheet. So roll one die and add three to it. Okay, so we're aiming for six again, really. Uh, five, that'll do. Uh, that's a good score. Okay, so we get eight faith. Because you've got to have faith. Something, something, touch your body. Right. right in the words of George Michael. Right. Because um, you've got to have faith. Yeah, you, you can't have between, uh, you can't have a, uh, a die with, or you can't have no die because the probability of it landing on anything is zero. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. Enough simple uh, mathematical probability. Right. Uh, for reasons that will that will be explained below, skill, stamina, and luck scores change constantly during the adventure and faith may change too you must keep an accurate record of these scores and of the changes to them for this reason you are advised either to write small in the boxes or to keep an eraser handy but never rub out your initial scores although you may be awarded additional skill stamina and luck points these additions cannot raise any score above its initial value, uh, initial figure rather except on rare occasions when you'll be instructed accordingly in a particular paragraph um, Faith can be raised above its initial score if you encounter events or magic items which increase faith. These situations are explained in the relevant paragraphs. Your skill score reflects your swordsmanship and general fighting expertise. The higher the better. Uh, your stamina score reflects your general constitution, your will to survive, your determination and overall fitness, and your ability to take blows in battle. The higher your stamina score, the longer you'll be able to survive. Your luck score indicates how naturally, how naturally lucky a person you are. Uh, me, personally, will be at minus a million then. Anyway, the longer you will be able to... No, really, it'll probably be about two, I'd say. Anyway, the longer you will be able... To, oh, wrong one. Um, luck and magic are facts of life in the exciting fantasy world you are about to explore. Um, your faith score indicates your purity of heart and the strength of your belief in the forces of good. Um, mine would be at six then. No, d yeah, about six. <laughs> um... Uh, a high faith score enables you to force certain evil creatures to flee from you when they sense and fear your valour. But it also means that they are more likely to notice you and be hostile towards you. You will learn more about the importance of your faith as you undertake the adventure in store for you. Magic. During your adventure you may find some magic items, although at first you may not realise that they are magic, nor even be sure what they do. Such items may rarely... Give you the uh, give you the ability to cast a magic spell. If you find such an item, you will be instructed in its use in a particular paragraph. To begin with, however, you are not a mage, but a brave warrior. 
Um, annoying fly just flown in through the window. That's the that's the fifth one today. Anyway, uh, to begin with, however, you are not a mage but a brave warrior, and you must overcome your enemies by your wits and courage and the use of your sword. Battles, you will often come across paragraphs in the book which instruct you to fight a creature of some sort. An option to flee may be given, but if not, or if you choose to attack the creature anyway, you must resolve the battle as, as described below. Uh, first, uh, record the opponent's skill and stamina scores in the first vacant monster encounter box on your adventure sheet. Scores for each creature are given every time you have an encounter. Sequence for combat is then, roll two dice for the opponent, add its skill score. This total is the creature's attack strength. Roll two dice for yourself. Add your own skill score to the number rolled. This total is your attack strength. If your attack strength is higher than that of your opponent, you have wounded it. Proceed to step four. If your opponent's attack strength is higher than yours, it has wounded you. Proceed to step five. If both attack strength, uh, if both attack strength totals are the same, you have avoided each other's blows. Um, start the next attack round from step one above. You have wounded the creature, so subtract two points from its stamina score. You may use your luck here to do additional damage. See below. Proceed to step 6. The creature has wounded you, so subtract 2 points from your own stamina score. Again, you may use luck. Yeah, you may use your luck to reduce the damage the creature does to you, see below. Make the appropriate changes to either your opponent's or your own stamina score and to your luck score if you use luck, see below. Um, begin the next attack round, repeat steps 1 to 6. This sequence continues until the stamina of either you or the creature you are fighting has been reduced to 0, death. Fighting more than one creature. If you come across more than one potential enemy in a particular encounter, the instructions in that paragraph will tell you how to handle the battle. Sometimes you'll have to fight them together, sometimes you'll be able to fight them one after the other. Luck. At various times during your adventure, either in battles or when you come across situations in which you could be either lucky or unlucky, details of these are given in the, in the relevant paragraphs, you may call on your luck to make the outcome more favourable. But beware, using luck is a risky business, and if you're unlucky, the results could be disastrous. The procedure for using your luck is as follows. Um, roll two dice. If the number rolled is equal to or less than your current luck score, you have been lucky, and the result will go in your favour. If the number rolled is higher than your current luck score, you have been unlucky and will be penalised. The procedure is known as... Uh, this procedure is known as testing your luck. Each time you test your luck, you must subtract one point from your current luck score, um, whether the outcome were successful or unsuccessful. Thus, you will soon uh, realise that the more you rely on your luck, the more risky this will become. If things go so badly that your luck is reduced to one or zero, you will automatically be, be unlucky whenever you are forced to test your luck, so be cautious out there. Uh, using luck in battles. On certain pages of the book, you will be told to test your luck. You will then be told the consequences of your being lucky or unlucky. However, in battle, in battles, you you always have the option of using your luck either to inflict a more serious wound on a creature you have just wounded, or to reduce the effects of wound the creature has just inflicted on you. If you have just wounded the creature you are fighting, you may test your luck as described above. If you are lucky, you have inflicted a severe wound and may deduct two extra points from the creature's stamina score, uh, so that your blow reduces its stamina by four points rather than usual two. However, if you are un unlucky, the wound was a mere graze, and you must restore one point to the creature's stamina score. It, um, instead of your blow causing two points of damage to its stamina, it is reduced by only one point. If the creature has just wounded you, you may test your luck to try to minimise this wound. If you are lucky, you have managed to avoid the full impact of the blow and may restore one point to your own stamina. Instead of the creature's blow causing two points of damage to your stamina, it is reduced by only one point. Um, but if you are unlucky, then you have taken a more serious blow and you must deduct one extra stamina point so that the creature's blow causes uh, damage worth three stamina points rather than usual two. Uh, remember that you must deduct one point from your current luck score each time you test your luck. Storing skill, stamina, luck, and faith. Skill. Your skill score will not change much during the adventure. Occasionally a paragraph may give an instruction to, to increase or decrease your skill score. A magic weapon may increase your skill, but remember that you uh, that only one weapon can be used at a time. You, uh, you cannot claim two skill bonuses for carrying two magic swords. Your skill score... Your skill score cannot exceed its initial value unless you are specifically instructed to the contrary. Stamina and provisions. Your, uh, your stamina score will go up and down a lot during your adventure. As you fight creatures and undertake arduous tasks, as you near your goal, your stamina score may be dangerously low, and battles may become particularly risky, so be careful. Your backpack contains enough provisions, uh, provisions for 10 meals. Write that down now. Uh, 10 meals, so 10. 
Um, uh, you may rest and eat at any time except when fighting, but you may eat only one meal at a time. Eating a meal restores four stamina points. When you eat a meal, add four points to your current stamina score and deduct one point from your provisions on your adventure sheet. A separate provisions remaining box is provided on the adventure sheet for recording details of provisions. Remember that you have a long way to go, so use your provisions wisely. Remember that. Uh, remember also that your stamina score may never exceed its initial value unless you are specifically instructed otherwise on a page. Luck. Your luck score will also change during the adventure as you test your luck. Additions to your luck score may also be awarded when you have been especially fortunate. Details of this are given in the appropriate paragraphs of this book. Uh, remember that, as with skill and stamina scores, your luck may never exceed its initial value unless you are specifically told this. Faith. Your faith may be shaken by certain perils during your adventure, but it may also be increased when you are victorious in very dangerous battles and when you find certain objects or relics of good. Your faith score can be increased above its initial value. You will find out exactly how faith works when you encounter certain creatures during your adventure, and you will, um, and you will also be instructed about this on the relevant pages. Afflictions. The adventure you will, you will embark on is very hazardous. Monsters and traps are not the only dangers you will face. Uh, you may find yourself beset by certain afflictions at some stage, curses or other disadvantages of an even more sinister nature. Um, we won't spoil your fun by telling you exactly what these are. Uh, suffice it to say that if you suffer one or more afflictions, you will be instructed about their effects in the relevant paragraphs. Fortunately, it is possible to rid yourself of them if you are brave, wise and lucky. Afflictions must be recorded in the afflictions box on your adventure sheet when you incur them. You can use an eraser to write them out later if you are fortunate enough to rid yourself of them. Equipment. You, you will start your adventure with a bare minimum of equipment, uh, but you will find other items during your travels. You are armed with a sword and dressed in leather ar armor and also carry a shield. Right. Sword. Uh, armor. And shield. I'll put leather armor. There we go. Lovely jubbly. Where are we? There we go. You have a backpack like a rucksack or haversack. Haversack, don't really know how to pronounce that. On your back to hold your provisions and any treasures or other items you may find. You also carry a lantern which you can use to light your way when necessary. Right, lantern. Lovely jubbly. Right. Hints on play. Your journey will be perilous and you may well fail on your first attempt. Make notes and draw a map as you explore. This map will prove invaluable in later forays in this adventure and it, and it will enable you to progress more rapidly to unexplored sections. Not all areas contain treasure. Many merely contain traps and creatures which you will no doubt fall foul of. You may take wrong turnings during your quest and while you may indeed progress through to your ultimate destination it is by no means certain that you will find um, what you are searching for. Um, be very wary about testing your luck unless a paragraph tells you that you must do this. Generally, when it comes to fights, you should test your luck only to keep yourself alive if a creature's blow might otherwise kill you, so far as reducing your stamina loss from other creatures' blows is, is concerned. Don't test your luck in order to try and do extra damage to your enemy unless this is really necessary. Luck points are precious. It will be realised that paragraphs make no sense if read in numerical order. It is essential that you read only the paragraphs you're instructed to go to. Uh, reading other paragraphs may only cause confusion and will certainly lessen the excitement and surprise during play. Uh, the one true way to, succe uh, to success in adventure involves minimising risk. Any player, no matter how weak his or her initial dice rolls, should be able to struggle through to the final achievement and glory. I disagree with that. Um, if you have low skill, this is extremely difficult, near impossible. Um, may the luck of the gods... Um, go with you on the adventure ahead. Well, apart from that blasphemy, um, um, thank you very much. Okay, there's the adventure sheet. And let's read the background. Um, background. Rumours of great wealth and treasure have lured you west of Fem Free in the Old World to the forbidding land of Morastasia, home of unscalable peaks clad in ice and snow, obscured by great swathes of freezing mist. The air is cold and damp, and you are dressed in furs to keep out the chill. Hunched in a swaying coach, um, heading north towards Mortvania, uh, you wonder whether any of the rumours you have heard have any truth in them. People hereabouts are poorly fed and clothed, and this hardly seems a place of great riches. Still, 
Uh, perhaps that means that the treasures are still hidden and that the local folk haven't found them. You are aroused from your reverie as the coach creaks to a halt. The coachman opens the doors and begin... Uh, uh, the coachman open the doors and more than one um, open the doors and begin lowering trunks and bags from the roof. You step out into a murky twilight. A thick winter fog is drawing in around the little coaching village of Leverhelven, uh, Leverhelven, where you will rest tonight. The tavern is small and hardly luxurious, but the food is hot and the mulled wine is spiced and refreshing. Uh, but the local people, wary of strangers, talk little. After you enter, the, uh, the tavern door is barred and the windows are already shuttered. The place has a strange name, the Heart's Blood, but this doesn't look like hunting country, except for those seeking bears or wolves for their pelts. You ask, uh, you ask the tavern keeper how the inn got its name, and a deathly hush descends in the room. He turns away, refusing to speak to you. Uh, you wonder how a polite and innocent question can have made, uh, could have made him react in such a way. Uh, what's more, uh, a man sitting by the fire turns round and spits at your feet. An old woman, swathed in shawls and a peasant's smock, looks over at you and says, um, Furriners don't know better. You take her over at over a drink and ask her to tell you more. At least she's talking to you, which is more friendly than anyone else in here is. As she gulps greedily at, at the warm wine. Taint no heart's blood, stranger. Um, we're never called that till they change the sign outside. It is the heart's blood, see? H-E-A-R-T. That's what too many folk round here, around here has given up. Their heart's blood. Yeah, um, a heart spelt H-A-R-T is actually a small deer, I think. Um, the low murmur of voices that had begun once more is completely silenced. Many people are casting fierce looks at you and the old woman, and the barman bellows at her to be silent. But her face is flushed with the warmth and the wine, and she says she will not be unheard. "'Tis the Count, damn his black heart. Folk vanish from the village, they do, and are never seen again. The Count takes them up to the castle, to, uh, to be sure, and there they die a terrible death. Terrible! There's folk as have heard the screams from the place, screams as from the souls in hell itself. Now tears run down her old, weathered face. Didn't he take my granddaughter only yesterday? Oh, that was the old woman. Um, didn't we see the coach and the headless horseman in the village, my poor little Nastasia? Uh, such a beautiful, gentle girl taken by the fiend himself. Not a man in this godforsaken place brave enough to go to the castle and save her. Embarrassed voices murmur round the room as sparks fly from the fire. The crackling of the burning wood seems to emphasise the old woman's desperate plea. I beg you, sir, to rescue her. She is only seventeen, and she has done no harm to anyone. As she bursts into tears again. A tall, red-haired man gets up from a table opposite and approaches you. You see he has only one arm, the right sleeve of his tunic being pinned up to his chest. Stranger... I take you for a wanderer, a seeker after adventurer. What old Svetlana says is true. The Count is a terrible and evil soul, and, ca um, and Castle Hydrich is, or Hydrich, is a, is a place of horror. I would have tried to slay him myself, but for one obvious reason. You nod as he glances down at his empty sleeve. Will you help us? From my own days as a warrior, I have some gold put by, and it's yours gladly if you will help. The eyes of all present turn to you, imploring your, assist imploring your assistance. You are about to nod your agreement to this proposal when the door of the tavern bursts open. The people inside cry out in fear as an icy blast whips through the room. Outside in the mist you can make out a black coach with four jet black steeds prancing and whinnying. And in the doorway stands a spectral figure. Bony fingers extend from black sleeves and he beckons you... But he says nothing. How could he? He has no head. Now I'll turn to paragraph one. Okay, let's go. Uh, after 29 minutes. <laughs> right. Um, okay, it's paragraph one. Now you follow the beckoning figure outside into the swirling mists. It leaps up to the driver's seat of the black coach and the carriage door swings open. Uh, the steeds prance expectantly, their breath steaming in the cold air. Will you attack the headless horseman? Turn to 201. 
Get in the coach, turn to 174. Ignore the coach and ask a person how to get to the castle. Turn to 148. Um, naturally, of course, because this horseman looks pretty evil, um, we are going to ignore the coach and ask a local person how to get to the castle. So turn to 148. Here we go. 148. Oh, there it was. Um, people are eager to tell you how to get to the castle. They warn you that the road the carriage travels on is very unsafe. Only that ghostly vehicle can traverse it safely. They point out that there is a trail heading northeast through the forest and that this leads to the castle. If you are lucky, you may avoid the forest's wild animals. There is a forester's cottage along the way uh, where you could rest and sleep. You'll have to cross the river, though. The one-armed man in the tavern gives you two gold pieces for the fee the ferryman will ask of you. All right, two gold pieces. Let's put two and a comma. There we go. Uh, you set off along the trail and soon you find yourself enveloped in the forest. The branches of the trees seem to be twisted and contorted into grotesque shapes, and in the distance owls hoot and wolves howl. Uh, howl, rather. I said howl. Uh, the forest floor is bare of plant cover, and your boots crunch on the gravelly earth. It grows lighter, perhaps. Um, it grows lighter, perhaps. Dawn is approaching, and then an arrow whistles past your ear and embeds itself in a tree trunk. In the gloom to your left, you see a large bear lumbering towards you, and to one side, a slim figure is knocking a nut. Never heard that word before, or rather, last time I read this book, um, is knocking another. Um, another arrow to a longbow, ready to fire at you. Will you attack the archer? Turn to 246. Attack the bear? Turn to 295. Try to parley with the figure, whoever it is. Turn to 344. Or make a run for it and try to get away. Turn to 197. We're going to try to parley with the figure, um, whoever it is. Turn to 344. And there's a picture of the bear and the archer. There we go. Um, yep, 344. Here we go. Um, there it is. Uh, you cry out that you mean them no harm, but the woman has already loosed off an arrow which strikes you. Lose two stamina points. Okie dokie. Uh, lose two stamina. So we're down to 19 now. There we go. Um, lowering her bow, she gestures to the bear, which growls but doesn't attack you. She walks over apologising and explains that she is a forest ranger whose job it is to protect the woods, and she did not expect anyone going about alone at night to be up to any good. She binds the flesh wound the arrow made. Um, Valderes the ranger is a friendly and helpful person. You tell her of your quest to rescue Nastasia from the clutches of Count Heydrich. At this she looks very serious. The Count is a very evil man. Fierce wolves and flocks of bats infest the land around, the, around his castle, and the local folks say he steals away young women to be his slaves, or worse. Um, but, it, um, but it wasn't always like that. His, his brother Siegfried, who was Count before him, now he was a decent and good man. But she breaks off at the sound of a peal of thunder as heavy rain begins to, uh, begins to splatter down through the bare trees. Uh, through the bare tree branches overhead. Come on, let's get you to the ferry. Now you set off with her towards the river, and on your um, and on the way she gives you some food to help you on your journey. Add two meals to to your provisions. Oh, brilliant! So we're at twelve now. Fantastic. So that makes up for the stamina we lost. Uh, turn to thirteen. Okay, 13, here we go. As you approach, a small wizened gnome... Is it wizened or wizened? Wait a minute. Let's say wizened. I think it's wizened. As you approach, a small wizened gnome scuttles out of his hut into the grey light of dawn um, and sidles up to you, grinning rather maliciously. He demands two gold pieces for ferrying you across... Um, in his boat, um, but he adds that you can stay and sleep in his hut if you wish, and you are very tired. If Valderes the ranger is with you, turn to 64. If she isn't, will you attack the gnome? Turn to 113. Accept his offer of a place to sleep and rest. Turn to 211. Pay him and cross the river. Turn to 162. Um, we have Valderes the ranger with us, so we're going to turn to 64. Yeah, I think it is wizened. Anyway, turn to 64. Actually, I don't know, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to second-guess myself. Wizened, wizened. 
It looks like it should be wizened, but I'm pretty sure it's wizened. Because that's what I've already said, always said, but I'll say wizened, who cares. Okay, 64. And Valderes lifts up the gnome by his jerkin and holds him up to speak to him face to face. Get my friend across the river, Snivel, free of charge. Uh, you owe me a favour for keeping those wolves away from you last week. Turning to you, she murmurs that Snivel is not the kind of gnome whose offer of hospitality you should accept. There is a forester's hut further along the trail, and, and you will be able to find rest there in safety. She puts the gnome down, and he fawns and toadies to you. Uh, you clamber into his boat, and he mutters some words which you don't make out. The boat moves straight out against the current into the middle of the river. Um, Valderes waves goodbye to you as you step out safely on the opposite bank. Turn to 383. Yeah, I think if you stay in, in his hut or whatever it is, I think he tries to. Yeah, I think he lures some wolves to attack you or something like that because he wants them to kill you and then and then and then to get your equipment from you or something like that. Anyway, turn to 383. Fiddle dee dee. There we go. It's there. Right. Uh, you set off along the trail on the far bank of the river and walk um, and walk on through the slight mist. There is no bird song and little sign of life. Uh, the silence is almost unnerving. After some hours, you, uh, you come upon a small stone cottage nestling in a clearing. A thin stream of blue wood smoke drifts lazy, uh, lazily upwards from the chimney. Uh, looking cautiously through the half-open door, you see a man inside sitting dozing before a stove. He is dressed in brown and grey leathers, and there is a long curved knife in his hands. Uh, you see little else from where you are, although you can smell something good cooking in there. If, if you did not sleep at the gnome's hut, you are getting very tired now, and you must sleep here. You could attack the man, hoping to achieve surprise, turn to 27, or go in and talk with him, turn to 126. If you did sleep at the gnome's hut, you have the extra option of ignoring the man and just continuing on your journey, turn to 228. And we're going to um, we're going to go in and talk to him, of course, because attacking a sleeping man is uh, is obviously a dishonourable thing to do. So go in and talk with him. Turn to 126. And also, we want to avoid fights if at all possible. Uh, you cough, and the man, having woken, looks up nervously at you. He offers you bread and some hot soup from a pan by the fire. This will restore four lost stamina points, and tells you who he is and what he's doing here. Okay, so we need to. Put our stamina back to maximum because uh, the nice broth he gave us has, uh, has healed us. Um, now the forester, um, Barandran, says that he was once a warrior but that he tired of battle and bloodshed. Now he prefers to live alone at peace with the creatures of the forest. Now, however, they have mostly disappeared and... Uh, and this saddens and worries him. He is sure that it is the evil from Castle Heidrich that is fighting them away. You feel confident that you can tell him about your quest. He commends you on your bravery and says that he may be able to help you a little. He knows that there is at least one good man in the castle who might be helpful. Uh, Lothar, the, the castellan of the castle, used to be friendly with Barandran. But I have not seen him in some months. I do not even know if he if he still lives. Let's write that down, Lothar. Um, let's write it under here. So Lothar, let's just keep that there. There we go. Um, um, perhaps he too has fallen, fallen under the Count's sway or been done away with, but if you meet him, he may be able to help you. Um, Barangian also, also gives you a gift, um, a, a string of cloves of garlic which he gets from a small herb garden at the back of his cottage. Okay, uh, cloves of garlic. That'll be handy. Uh, equipment, cloves of... Garlic. There we go. At his urging, you place this um, round your neck. Add garlic to your possessions. Um, Brandron offers you a place to stay. If you didn't sleep at the gnome's hut, you must sleep here. Recover four lost stamina points. Doesn't matter because I'm already at maximum. And whether or not you sleep here, you resume your journey in the afternoon. Turn to 228. Okay, 228. Last paragraph, and I'm ending the video. Okay, where is it? There we go. You head on through the afternoon into the darkening evening until finally you see a castle on top of a steep hill. Roll two dice. If the total is less than or equal to your skill, turn to 262. If it is greater than your skill, turn to 277. 
Okay, um, I will do that next time. And, well, I better do it now actually because I haven't gone to the next paragraph yet. Okay, okay, roll two dice. Uh, yep, dice program. We need it to be less than. Uh, what do we need? Less than or equal to the skill, yeah. So we need it to be less than or equal to whatever my skill is, which is which is 11. Okay, so you need two dice less than or equal to 11. Uh, the odds are in our favour, really, because there's only one out of 36 chance it'll be 12, which is the only way we can lose this. Um, yeah, so need this to be 11 or less. There we go, got it. Let's get rid of the buzzing. There we go. So, yeah, that worked. Um, let's go to... 362. I'll just read this one, then I'll end the video. Um, you walk along as far as the base of a narrow trail, which leads up, uh, which, which leads up a steep incline, and suddenly you walk out of the fog into a completely clear area, S starkly illuminated by the three-quarter moon. Uh, stands the brooding castle Hydrich. You can walk up and enter the, uh, the half-open front gates, turn to 326, or walk around the outside to see what you can make of the place. Okay, we'll decide on that next time. So thank you for watching. In the next video, we will be deciding on whether to um, um, go into the gates or walk outside uh, the outside of the castle. Thanks for watching, um, and goodbye.